Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Monday, January 18th, and from a lockdown at the U.S. Capitol this morning to what's ahead for Inauguration Day, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's start at the Capitol. The U.S. Capitol building was under a brief lockdown this morning because of a fire that broke out under the bridge on Interstate 295 at 1st and F Streets in D.C. That fire also caused the inaugural rehearsal to be evacuated, although to be clear, there were no fires on or within the Capitol campus, and the incident was deemed to not be a threat. But security really has ramped up in the days following the siege on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, which left six people dead, especially with Inauguration Day coming up here on Wednesday. Since Saturday, D.C. police responded to three suspicious package calls in the downtown D.C. area, but no explosives were said to have been found. Federal law enforcement and D.C. police arrested five people over the weekend, including one person for false impersonation of a police officer and another for carrying around a BB gun. And now the FBI is vetting 25,000 National Guard troops in D.C. for securing President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, as there are some concerns over the potential for insider attacks or other threats from service members. But Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy told the Associated Press Sunday that so far, they have seen no evidence of any threats, and officials said the vetting hasn't flagged any issues. And something interesting to know is that number 25,000 in terms of how many National Guard troops are coming for this inauguration is about two and a half times larger than in previous inaugurations. But let's look at how this inauguration does compare to other inaugurations and other ways here, starting with swearing in. Starting with our nation's first ceremony, the Bible has become a staple for some of our leaders. Take George Washington's Bible, for example. That became a really popular choice for his successors, with former presidents Warren G. Harding, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Jimmy Carter, and George H.W. Bush using it during their inaugurations. The Bible President Abraham Lincoln took his oath of office on was brought back into circulation by our 44th and 45th presidents. President Barack Obama used it in both his 2009 and 2013 ceremonies, while President Donald Trump used it as one of the two Bibles involved in his 2017 inauguration. But in case you didn't know, not every president has used the Bible while taking their oath of office. President John Quincy Adams said he used a volume of law to take his oath, while Theodore Roosevelt and Lyndon B. Johnson's ceremonies went without a Bible because of how quickly they came to take office. So what is in store for President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris? Biden said he'll keep up the tradition of using his family's Bible from 1893, and Harris, who is the first black, South Asian, and female vice president, will take her oath of office from Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the Supreme Court's first Latina justice, and she'll likely be using two Bibles, one of which belonged to the first black Supreme Court justice, Thurgood Marshall. But one tradition, though not as long-standing as swearing in itself, is a bit up in the air this year. For the past 32 years, outgoing presidents have left handwritten notes in the Oval Office for their successors. And the first one was kind of silly and a little bit sweet. As he was getting ready to leave the White House in January 1989, President Ronald Reagan wanted to leave a note for his successor, George H.W. Bush, and reached for a pad marked with a cartoon by humorous Sandra Boynton under the phrase, don't let the turkeys get you down. It showed a collection of turkeys scaling a prone elephant, which is of course a symbol of both men's Republican Party. It said, Dear George, you'll have moments when you'll want to use this particular stationery. Well, go to it. He noted treasuring the memories that they'd share and said he'd be praying for the new president before concluding, I'll miss our Thursday lunches. Wrong. And so a tradition was born, although we don't know if that will happen again this year. President Donald Trump has refused to accept the results of the November election and has already said he won't be attending the inauguration for President-elect Joe Biden. So it does seem a bit doubtful that he will be leaving a handwritten note in the Oval Office, although we never know and we'll just have to wait and see. So again, the inauguration is this Wednesday with Biden swearing in expected to happen at noon. The ceremony is expected to be held at the western front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., which is the side that faces the National Mall and the Washington Monument. 
DC is expecting sunny weather and temperatures in the 40s that day, but while Biden swearing in will happen in person, expect the audience to be fairly limited. His inaugural committee is urging people not to attend in person. Lady Gaga will sing the national anthem at Joe Biden's inauguration, and Jennifer Lopez will give a musical performance on the west front of the U.S. Capitol when he's sworn in as the nation's 46th president. And a number of other celebrities are expected to make some appearances during the Celebrate America primetime special on the day of Joe Biden's inauguration. That is set to begin at 8.30, and it's hosted by Tom Hanks. You can catch that on WTOL. And over the weekend, there was a short-lived protest at the Ohio Capitol building, which has been anticipated as we get closer and closer to January 20th. As of around noon on Sunday, about 50 protesters were at the State House, and some of them were armed, but they left just a few hours later. There were reports of both Trump supporters and those who did not support the president at the protest, but one Ohio State Highway Patrol trooper described the whole ordeal as peaceful and said that nobody was arrested. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said he was pleased with that outcome, but stressed that authorities, quote, continue to have concerns for potential violence in the coming days, which is why I intend to maintain security levels at the State House as we approach the presidential inauguration. And before I go, I want to talk about today, which is, of course, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's more than a federal holiday. Today is a day where we celebrate an icon and really reflect on the values that he believed in. And throughout our community today and over the weekend and in the week ahead, there have been celebrations honoring his life and legacy, including two happening today at 7 p.m., the Tiffin Seneca and Bowling Green virtual celebrations. So you can check that out through the live streams, and I have links to all of that on our website right now. And I have a link for that in the description of this video, so check that out if you haven't already. But with all of that being said, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.